So real-world data is something that is emerging more and more as part of the total evidence that we're generating with Eliquis. So five years ago, we presented the Aristotle study at ESC in Paris. So we're celebrating this five-year anniversary, so to say. There was a study that involved 18,000 patients. And in this study, we could show that patients atrial fibrillation patients that were treated with Eliquis did not only experience a reduction in stroke versus a vitamin K antagonist or Coumadin, but they experienced a reduction in major bleeding as well. Randomized controlled clinical trials are very important in order to gain regulatory approval. They do, however, have limitations such as that you only look at a relatively selected patient population. Now that Eliquis has been on the market for a couple of years, we're now able to generate data in a broader patient population that includes patients that were not necessarily included in the Aristotle trial. It's very, uh, it, it's very important for us to show that the same results that we have shown in Aristotle, which is the dual risk reduction, less bleeding and less stroke, we have now been able to replicate in real-world data. We have shown in very in different data sets, in very large data sets, now involving more than 700,000 patients, a reduction in ma major bleeding versus vitamin K antagonist or Coumadin. And recently there has been a publication by Yao et al, where there was not only shown a reduction in major bleeding, but there was a reduction in stroke as well. Well, like in a randomized controlled clinical trial, you obviously have to limit your patient population in order to eliminate certain confounding factors that might otherwise interfere with the endpoint in your trial. Whereas in real world, of course, a healthcare professional is basically has to make a decision when they see a patient with atrial fibrillation, do they want to anticoagulate that patient? And if they want to anticoagulate that patient, which anticoagulant they want to use? And they obviously don't do this according to very limited inclusion-exclusion criteria. And that's the reason why, for example, obviously they include more elderly patients, patients with even more comorbidities, and that's why it's important to obviously generate data in these patient populations as well. The RCT basically has revealed that, um, first of all, the most important thing that, that, that RCTs reveal is, of course, the effect the drug has. In a case of Eliquis, it's a reduction in stroke. Whenever you do anticoagulate a patient, there's always a certain re-bleeding risk associated with that. And that's why it's important not only to look at a stroke reduction, but look at what is the rate of major bleeding. And that's why it's important that, of course, you do show a reduction in major bleeding versus Coumadin. Yeah? And then, obviously, it is important for us to be able to now show this in real world as well. I think it will give a lot of confidence to both health, healthcare professionals as well as patients that you now not only have randomized control clinical data that show reduction in major bleeding as well as stroke, but now you have replicated this in real life with this dual risk reduction. First of all, we're not done with Aristotle, so to say. I mean, I, I just told you Aristotle is five years old, which seems old for a clinical study. It's a large clinical study involving 18,000 patients. We have been continuously able to generate more data in different subgroups of patients, and we will continue to do so. So we're still able to get clinically very informative and important results out of Aristotle where we look at certain subgroups like, for example, elderly patients, elderly patients that fall. That's, by the way, an abstract that we're presenting here at the ESC, where we could show that patients that, that have elderly patients that fall have a lower bleeding risk than on Eliquis than on Coumadin. The other thing, of course, is when it comes to real-world data, is that real, the number of patients that we can examine in real-world data will grow. We can look at different databases. So we can look at U.S. insurance databases as well as public health insurance databases in, uh, across the world, like in Europe, for example. So, for example, one of the late breakers here at ESC is an analysis that was done in the Norwegian healthcare database. So it's important to not only look at one geography, but replicate the same results in different geographies. And then, of course, the next step can be to 
maybe combined data sets and therefore be able to look at more specific subgroups like patients with renal insufficiency, uh, patients with other comorbidities, which will, whenever you combine databases, will be, be, it's going to be easier to do this. The, the one thing that is very important for us is that obviously we think that not only having randomized controlled data, but having real world data that shows a reduction not only in stroke, but major bleeding versus Coumadin is something that makes patients confident as well as healthcare professionals to prevent stroke using Eliquis.